In the first story, the writer is asking Ragpicker Boy, that why does he do that work? The boy's name is, Saheb. He has left his home, which was in Dhaka, long ago. Because, storms swept away their fields and homes. Why do you do this? I have nothing else to do. Go to school. I realized how hollow my advice would sound to this poor Ragpika. There is no school in my neighborhood. When they build one, I will go. If I start a school, will you come? Yes. After a few days, I saw him running up to me. Is your school ready? It takes longer to build a school. I was embarrassed at having a promise that was not meant. After months of knowing him, I asked his name. He announces, Sahabi Alame. He does not know its meaning. If he knew its meaning, that is, Lord of the Universe, he could not believe it. Unaware of what his name means, he roams the streets with his friends, an army of barefoot boys, who appear like morning birds, who disappear at noon. I ask one. Why aren't you wearing your chat pals? My mother did not bring them down from the shelf. Even if she did bring down the shoes, he will throw them off. The second boy meant that the barefoot boy didn't want to wear chapels. The second boy was wearing unmatching shoes. When the writer asked why he was wearing unmatching shoes, he just moved his feet as if trying to hide them. There was also a third boy. He wanted shoes as he had never owned a pair in his life. Traveling across the country, I've seen children walking barefoot. One explanation is, it is not lack of money, but a tradition to stay barefoot. I wonder if this is the only excuse to explain away, a never-changing state of poverty. I remember a story, a man from Udipi once told to me. As a young boy, he would go to school, past an old temple, where his father was a priest. On the way to school, he would stop at the temple, and pray for a pair of shoes. Thirty years later, I visited the temple which was now drowned in an air of loneliness. I saw, in the backyard, where the new priest lived, there were red and white chairs. A young boy dressed in a grey uniform, wearing socks and shoes, arrived, and threw his bag on a folding bed. Looking at the boy, I remembered the prayer the other boy had made to the goddess, when he had finally got a pair of shoes. He prayed, let me never lose them. The goddess had granted his prayer. Young boys like the son of the priest now wore shoes. But many others, like the ragpickers in my neighborhood, remain shoeless. Let me explain you what she said. The man from Adipi, whose father was a priest, always prayed at the temple for a pair of shoes. He gets the shoes. Thirty years later, when the writer visits the temple, the new priest's son was wearing a school dress, with socks and shoes. The writer is trying to show that the position of priests have improved over 30 years. But the ragpickers still remain shoeless. My introduction with the barefoot ragpickers lead me to see Mapuri, a place on the edge of Delhi, yet miles away from it, symbolically. Those who live here are squatters, who came from Bangladesh back in 1971. Squatters means illegal settlers. Sahib's family is among them. The place was then a wasteland. It still is, but now it isn't empty. In structures of mud, with roofs of depaulin, devoid of sewage, drainage, or running water, live 10,000 ragpickers. They have lived here for more than 30 years, without an identity, without permits, but with ration cards, that gets their names on voters' lists, and enable them to buy grain. Food is more important for survival, than identity. Why did you all leave your beautiful land? of green fields and rivers. If at the end of the day, we can feed our families, and go to bed without an aching stomach, we would rather live here, than in the fields, that give us no grain. Wherever they find food, they pitch their tents, that become transit homes. Children grow up in them, and become partners in survival. And survival in CMA Puri means, rag picking. Through the years, they became professional in rag picking garbage to them, is gold. It is their daily bread, a roof over their heads, even if it is a leaking roof. But for children, it is even more. Sahib says, I sometimes find a rupee, even a 10 rupee note. When you can find a silver coin in garbage, 
you don't stop searching, as there is hope of finding more. It seems, that for children, garbage has a meaning different from what it means to their parents. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder, for the elders, it is the means of survival. One winter morning, I saw Sahib, standing by the fenced gate of the neighborhood club, watching two men dressed in white, playing tennis. I like the game. I go inside when no one is around. The gatekeeper lets me use the swing. Sahib too is wearing tennis shoes, that look strange over his discolored shirt and shorts. He says as explanation, someone gave them to me. The fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy, who perhaps refused to wear them, because of a hole in one, does not bother him. For one who has walked barefoot, even shoes with a hole is a dream come true. But the game he is watching so intently, is out of his reach. This morning, Saheb is on his way to the milk booth. In his hand, is a steel canister. I now work in a tea stall down the road. I'm paid 800 rupees a month, and all my meals. Do you like the job? His face, I see, has lost the carefree look. The steel canister is heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulder. The bag was his own, but the canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop. Now, Saheb is no longer his own master. 